Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rosa Guerrero Contreras. Say that five times fast. Just kidding. Uh, my name is Rosa Guerrero Contreras. I'm here with Empower Your Path, my life coaching company, where we bring to you three pillars. And if you are new to this channel and this is the first video that you're watching, please do go back and watch my intro channel where I give you an introduction of all of the things and a disclaimer about everything that I'll be talking about. So, I'm so excited. At the end of this video, I'm gonna play for you Where Is The Love by Black Eyed Peas. I just, that song could not be more relevant. It could not be more relevant to today. And um, it's so funny because it all still rings true. And that's all I have to say about the Black Eyed Peas. Anyways, back to the three pillars of Empower Your Path. Here at Empower Your Path, we talk about what I like to call the Trinity, which is your spirituality, your emotional body, and your mental body, right? These in and of themselves are often separated, right? Especially we have the, the mental health, you know, mental health care, mental health is important, mental, mental, mental. But we separate that from our spirituality and we separate that from our emotional health as if they are separate. Yes, it is important to compartmentalize them in some ways because physically we may consider them different but they are all a part of our whole so i consider that trinity of our emotional mental and spiritual body to be one and the second pillar is our environment everything around us that affects us just as much as we affect it Okay, your environment could be your home, your environment could be your neighborhood, your environment could be your city, your town, your state, your country, whatever it is that is in your environment. And last but not least, our vessel. Number three is our vessel. How we take care of our vessel, how we consider our vessel, how we connect with our vessel, how we think about it, what other people say about it, all of the things that make up what our vessel is. And perception is a huge piece of everything that I'll be talking about on this channel, in addition to care and maintenance. Um, I am a millennial. I am 30 years old this year. Uh, very proud and happy to be in my 30s and finally feel like a real adult. Um, but for others, it may your relationship with your vessel may be very different, right? Because of how you grew up because of your family's relation to their body. There's just like so much to go into with your vessel, right? Initially, my ideas around vessel were really focused on health and really focused on like detoxing and fasting. And I had to take a couple steps back and ask myself, but what if people aren't ready to detox and fast? What if, of course, that's an important component that we'll talk about later on, but detoxing and fasting is way far from uh, where you need to start. So now that we're on the topic of the vessel, let's begin with some of these questions, right? You may find yourself in a place where change is on the horizon. Maybe there's something that you've been thinking about. Maybe you're interested. Maybe you're not feeling your best. Maybe you've been experiencing brain fog, nausea, diarrhea. Maybe there's just been like a lot of things intestinally digest in your digestion, <laughs> digestionally <laughs> um, that you are fed up with and you're done with. And maybe you've taken all the Tums, you've taken all the KO pectate, you've taken all the Pepto-Bismol, you've gone to the doctor. And this is usually the point where the doctor's like, well, I don't know what's wrong with you. All of these things are supposed to work. You might need a detox. You might need a fast. You might need a lifestyle change, or you might need to go through an elimination diet to see what it is in your diet, perhaps, or it might even be environmentally focused, but we'll get there later. Um, what you might need to change, or as, as simple as a flush, right? If you have a flush, and I'll take you through kind of like the sequence of, um, you know, like easiest to hardest in terms of this, this transformation. So very quickly, this list, right, a flush is the easiest, quickest, most, I would say, accessible way to essentially reset your system, or it's really cleaning yourself out. You're not really resetting, but you're cleaning yourself out. So um, 
The best example of a flush that I have is called an Epsom salt flush. I will include that in the links below. You can look it up on YouTube. You can go buy Epsom salt at your local Walgreens, CVS, or whatever convenience store that may have a hygiene section with Epsom salt. Remember, it has to be the non-fragrant fragrance um, edible Epsom salts. You don't want to be putting some fragrance chemicals in your body. And it's very, very simple. All you do is uh, dilute a little Epsom salt in water, drink 32 ounces of water with one tablespoon of Epsom salt, and then another 32 ounce container of water. Um, consume that within 15 minutes, and then you will be peeing out of both ends for a few hours. It's just a, it's just a flush. It's just a cleanse. It's just getting like whatever, whatever residue, you know, has been around for a while. It's just getting it out. Okay. So that's number one. Number two is a detox. A detox can be from anywhere from one day to several days to several weeks. There are people who do 40 day detox and all of these things. But if you are not familiar with the detox, if you've never done a flush, and also if you are, how do I say this? If you need to eat constantly, you know, like if, if eating has become a coping mechanism, um, you don't want to jump to a juice fast. You don't want to jump to um, fasting in general, where you just abstain from food at all. You really want to begin with an eating detox. Um, and so that is going to provide a little bit of a challenge for you, but it's not going to be so painstaking that you're going to be suffering. Okay. So um, I do have a three day detox that I've been practicing for the past five years or so. It's brought to you by Food Matters. I will also include the link below. It's a three day eating detox. I do have to say the detox that they provide is quite boring. Um, it's tasteless, it's a little bit difficult. So I have made some modifications which I will create a video later on how you can modify it to make it taste a little bit better. And perhaps, and this is where it gets sticky, right? Because detoxing, flushing, fasting, all of this is relative to where you are now. So you're not gonna be just miraculously like the most you know, divine cleanest version of yourself. This type of thing takes time. This type of thing is a process, right? It's not, it doesn't happen overnight. And so this is really something like if you're, if you're dedicated to your personal health, if you're dedicated to your own vessel care, this is something that you're gonna commit to over a longer period of time. Um, so the suggestion that I have been given is to detox at least four times a year. And so what I've been doing for the past five years is detoxing at least four times a year for three days each. Not that bad. But in addition to that, I have also been intermittent fasting almost every single day. Um, in addition to fruit fasting, um, water fasting, and perhaps even just dry fasting, right? And so that's another level, fasting. It is possible and it is okay, right? If you have diabetes, please be careful, but it is possible for you to fast with on diabetes. Um, but I read a quote, I believe it was a Dr. Sebi quote about fasting and how the answer to our obesity epidemic and the answer to our overeating epidemic truly is fasting, right? What's the opposite of feasting? Fasting. So um, we could very easily turn this around if people just abstained, right? Most of us, right, 40%, the last statistic that I saw is that 40% of Americans are obese, and I'm sure that's probably higher now. That's a very large number of people, no pun intended, but this is not something to celebrate. This is not something that should, we should be proud of. I also don't want to cross this like thin line of fat shaming because it's not about shaming our fat. It's about looking at the systems and the industries surrounding our food habits, our food choices and our food preferences that have led us to create an environment in our vessel that is not ideal to optimal health, okay? So we talked about the flush, we talked about the detox, cleanse. In general, if you're, if you're coming from a highly processed, highly meat, highly toxic, um, you know, alcohol, you drink a lot of alcohol diet, a cleanse is going to be as simple as reducing the toxicity, honestly. 
if you drink five to six times a week, dial that down to four to five times a week. If you consume animal products three times a day, dial that down to two times a day. Any type of reduction in toxicity in your lifestyle is going to create a cleansing effect in your body because that's what your body is designed to do. It is possible, depending on the level of toxicity, that that may not be true, but we're speaking in general terms. And obviously, I will have to disclaim that I am not a detox expert. I am not a trained medical professional, but I have been educating myself and learning through experience for the past 15 years as I've been focused on my health journey. So again, if you go back to my first video, I'm okay to be wrong. I'm okay to be proven wrong. And that's what I invite, actually. I invite you to not only prove me wrong, but to help educate me even more. That's how we grow a community and that's how we boost engagement. Okay. So the last one that I'll touch on is lifestyle change. Now, a little bit about me. I became vegan in 2015 after having been on a vegetarian journey since I was 16, bounced around quite a bit, became a pescatarian, went back to eating meat, saw a couple of vegan documentaries and I was, I was hooked. Um, I was not gonna go back to eating meat again. And even now, my idea of this lifestyle, my idea of healthy eating, my idea of nourishment in general continues to evolve. So the first thing I'll say about lifestyle change is not to push yourself so hard in, in any box. Don't, don't think so narrow as many of us do, as many of us did, right? Those of us who are kind of like waking up from, um, from you know, the conditioning that we applied to ourselves over a certain period of time, there is no solution that fits all. It would be lovely if the whole world was vegan, but that's not feasible. It's actually not possible, you know, for Native American tribes in Alaska to be vegan. You, you can't, there is no agricultural superpower up there. <laughs> you know, there is a way, vegan or not, to appreciate the land, to honor lives that you're taking. It is possible to create a 100% sustainable system. Keyword, bing, 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 sustainable. It's possible to do that. Plant life, animal life, whatever it may be. Unfortunately, we live in a society where that does not happen. Sustainability is not the key. Health is not the key. Profit reigns supreme. Fucking capitalism. I don't know if I can swear on YouTube, but capitalism reigns supreme. Profit reigns supreme. And um, everything else is kind of like collateral damage. So those are all the reasons why I chose to become vegan. I personally don't don't feel aligned with eating animals. I don't want to. I don't feel a need to. If my body were to tell me differently at some point in time in my life, then I would cross that bridge when I got there. Okay. So we just reviewed the flush, the detox, the cleanse, and the lifestyle change. If you feel called to a lifestyle change, just immerse yourself in the lifestyle, right? I learned how to be a vegan on YouTube. I had nobody in my life who's vegan. I still don't have anybody in my family who's vegan or really vegetarian. A lot of people are starting to, you know, cut down, but we still have this idea that like, oh, dark meat is different from white meat. It's all flesh. It's all muscle. It's all bones and ligaments and blood. And it's all, <laughs> it's all the same, whether it's coming out of the ocean or whether it's coming off land. Doesn't matter, honey buns. Okay, so. I say all this truly so that you can avoid disappointment. It is really disappointing when you're on Instagram and you're looking at all these people living their best, their best lives, drinking the green juice and so happy. Sometimes you're, if, you, if you don't cleanse and regulate your digestive flora first, all of that green juice is going to be real hard for you to process. All of that fiber, because there's a huge increase in fiber that you have to begin to take in once you switch over, let's say, to a plant-based diet. If you're on a standard American diet, you're not eating any fiber. You know, the, <laughs> the, best, the best chance that you have at eating fiber is, um, I don't know, celery sticks with your chicken wings, possibly. So I want y'all to remember that there are no quick fixes to solve 
any of your problems. Just the, the whole, the whole like, oh, I want this to happen fast. I want it to be quick. I want, the, I want to be over with. I'm done. Like, <sighs> take a second to remind yourself that you have a lot of life to live. <laughs> that there is time for everything. You can affirm, you can affirm in your heart and soul that whatever you want is possible. And if you truly, truly want it, if you truly want your greatest dreams and aspirations, you're going to be patient until it happens. If you would have told me 15 years ago that it would have taken me this long to get to where I wanted to be, um, I don't know, I probably would have been disillusioned and, and given up myself, but I made a commitment. So if you want to make a commitment to yourself to make all the changes, whatever it may be, right? And if you don't want to change, that's perfectly fine too. Maybe this is not the channel for you because I'm really focused on transformations and making those changes. And me, me for one, personally, I, I'm committed to constant evolution. I'm, I'm happy to continue to grow. I'm happy to continue to evolve. I'm happy to continue to learn. And it's okay. It's okay because I'm, I'm, I'm a great student of non-judgment working on it <laughs> because I, like so many, have been such a victim of my own doing, such a victim of my own judgment, such a, such a victim of, of my own perspective, of my own perception, which whew, once you come around to that realization is like, what the fuck? I had the power to control this this whole entire time. You can indeed set yourself free. So I also say all these things because not only is this not going to be a fast situation, but it may also not work the first time. One size does not fit all. One solution may not work for one person and may work well for another person. This takes patience. This takes commitment. This takes a willingness to fail right? And in my dictionary, personally, failure does not exist. There is no such thing as failure. Because what is the, what is the illusion of failure? The illusion of failure is that I am unsuccessful in something. And then what? I'll give you a minute. And then what? What happens? I'm unsuccessful in something and then I judge myself and then I put myself in a box and then I, um, I don't know, I undervalue myself for the rest of my life because I wasn't able to do one thing. No, perception, reframe, switch it up, honey buns. Failures are just lessons, right? And without lessons, we wouldn't learn. And without learning, we wouldn't grow. And without growing, we wouldn't evolve. So bring on a failure. All this, I'm excited. I'm excited for all the failure. Um, okay, and so the next most important thing before you even embark, before you even do your research, before you even, you know, get down to the how much does this thing cost? What are you seeking this change for? What is the reason? Are you doing this for your overall health? That's typically not the first reason why most people are doing it. So if you're doing it for your overall health, you're already closer than you think you are. You're already doing much better than you think you are. If you just want to contribute holistically to your to the wellness of your being, I really got to hand it to you. Good job. So if you were like me and you made this change initially when I was 17, right? Very... Um, superficial 16 17 I did it for my physical appearance I did it because not so much because I was like judging myself because I was a little bit bigger you know not even not even that much bigger I only ever had maybe like 20 to 25 pounds to lose but I was uncomfortable in my skin as a 16 year old I wasn't I wasn't happy in my body I just didn't feel like this this person that reflected back to me in the mirror was not me was not who I saw myself being and becoming. And that's exactly why I made this commitment. And then after making the commitment based on those, you know, kind of more superficial, more ident identifying reasons um, that then evolved to become so much more than I could imagine. So really anchor in that why when you're making these changes, but allow it to change, allow it to evolve, allow it to, Allow yourself to explore and understand more. Um, 
another huge reason why people seek these kinds of changes is because digestion problems, digestion issues, having severe discomfort when you're eating certain foods, especially your favorite foods, um, that could be really disheartening or having too much bowel movement, right? Consistent diarrhea, right? That's a huge problem and that can escalate um, into other issues or not having enough bowel movements. And so I really just wanna emphasize how important it is to go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, I for one grew up in a family where it was like, what, we don't talk about going to the bathroom? We don't poop, we don't pee, we don't, you know, it was so like taboo to go to the bathroom and uh, we are human beings. <laughs> we have this like biological system specifically for inputs and outputs, okay? And even that concept has has evolved up until this point and there are people who are breathitarians, okay? So if that, if you really wanna look at the, the spectrum <laughs> of lifestyle choices, um, it's, not, it's not just eating meat and not eating meat anymore. Um, it's so much more diverse than that. There, yeah, there are people that are breathitarians and only breathe and get all their sustenance from breathing. And uh, we can talk about that later because I'm super duper curious. I'm not sure if I would ever be a breathitarian. I mean, maybe it would make sense, you know, when you're like really, really old to be a breathitarian. I don't know, to be continued on the breathitarianism. But for those of you who are new to all of these different lifestyles that people live, yeah, there's people that only live on breath on oxygen. Wow, isn't that amazing? It's incredible. Um, and I do have to say, just to be, you know, like a responsible adult, please do consult your, your doctor or your medical professional always to assist you in areas where you really need support. The information I provide is purely for education purposes. That being said, it's important to have a team. It's important to be supported. It's important to have multiple sources of information. It's important to have resources that you trust. It's important to connect with others who are in a similar realm as you, who are curious about the same things as you. And I would highly encourage as much as you want to depend on the team, as much as you want to depend on the expertise of other people because you feel like they have the answers, they know what I need, especially if you do have some level of connection with your body, if you are in tune with yourself, we would say, you know, if you're connected to your intuition at all, I wouldn't put your intuition or the messages that your body sends you to the side in any case scenario. Always check in with you. A certain diet or meal plan might work for somebody else, but might not work for you. So there are so many different ways that we could cut this pie. There are so many different things that we could contribute to this whole idea of lifestyle. And so I just wanted to give you a little snippet of what it is to think about and consider how you're gonna go about your vessel care, right? And so for those of you who have parents and family members who have a long tradition of self-care and health and nutrition and food, y'all are so lucky. <laughs> y'all are so lucky beyond belief um, to be in a space where not only are you supported, but you get like generations of experience to, to learn after to to follow to guide you like I think that's the most beautiful thing um, and so for those of you who do have all of that wealth of experience please do share it share it with other people help create those types of traditions within other people because I for one do not come from a family that was anchored in health at all um, and I can share my personal story about health and why I decided to change my lifestyle further than just this discomfort in my body and wanting to lose a few pounds. But I will save that for another video. Thank you all again. This has been Rosa Contreras, Rosa Guerrero Contreras, because I am, I am married um, to a beautiful man. And I'm here with Empower Your Path, 
which is my life coaching business. I am a life coach offering customized one-on-one -on -one lifestyle transition coaching to anybody who may be interested. Please do follow me on Instagram. My handle is at empower.your.path. You can find all kinds of goodies and I have a link in my bio that can lead you to sign up for a discovery call if you're interested. And remember, do also please subscribe if you're interested and love the content. Click on the little notification bell and like this video. I appreciate you. I truly, truly, truly hope everybody has a great rest of your day, rest of your week, rest of your month, happy rest of your year, sending you love, compassion, and patience on your journey ahead.